Morning, Dale. Morning, Jim. Good morning, sir. Hello, Jim. Albert. I had to wait till somebody showed up before I could start my spiel. So welcome to Loco Campfire number 18. I can't believe we've been doing this two and a half months already. No, no, that would be longer than that. What would that be? By, by four or four months. Anyway, today is just another day in paradise. Um, we're doing this as a community gathering and just getting together and talk about what's the challenges of working with low code, plant and app, what, where we're going, what, how can we help? Uh, we have, uh, everything's recorded. We have all the episodes, all I think, except one out on uh, YouTube. And so you can view them out there, lots of good content. Um, we're doing this as a meeting format. So we say hi and then talk about what's going on. Um, and the main guideline is if you've got noise behind you, please just, uh, mute. Um, I think we're, uh, let's see, we have a, uh, a link for suggestions and questions and topics, and you guys are starting to use that. So I very much appreciate that. And, um, this is, this is just the spot to say hi. And I see it's just a, uh, a gathering. We have nobody new here today. So good morning, everyone. Who's that new guy in the middle? Bog, Bog? Uh, <laughs> well, he's new and old. Bogdan. Hello. Yeah, I'm new. <laughs> what you guys doing here? That's good. So uh, i just point out one more time, Capterra Reviews, I see uh, an email that said we're two re reviews away from some goal. I don't know what it is, I, uh, what we get out of that. But um, anyway, as I said last week, um, you know, the main reason to do this is to get 20 bucks. So if you'll, uh, seriously, if you'll do a review, we would appreciate it. Other than that, first call, what's on your mind? Hey Dale, this is Craig. I was uh, out for the last couple of weeks, and maybe I just missed them. And I just uh, one there was two things that were on the roadmap before that I just haven't seen lately uh, with the uh, plant and nap. One was the the Bootstrap four, and the second was the ability to do multi portals. I was just wondering if anything has. I, I tried to look through all of the different videos. I just didn't see anything on that. I was just wondering if you could for me personally, uh, give a quick update on that, if you know. Uh, so no, I don't know specifically. I know that uh, both of those things are, uh, are top of mind. Okay, I just side. want to make sure I didn't miss something. Thank you. And, and without throwing Bogdan under the bus, if he has any comments about uh, in, inside knowledge that he might have on those. Yeah, I, uh, uh, I don't have any updates on that okay. yet. Unfortunately, but also, I mean, I'm sure some of you know, uh, Reza has left our company. So now I'm taking back uh, slowly into the product backlog, getting the work. Uh, oh, I didn't know that. Uh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, uh, and that explains why I'm here. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> All right. Well, glad to hear, Bargain. <laughs> yeah, but I'm, I'm eager to get back into the product because yeah, I, I love being on that side of the business. So uh, I'm, I'm slowly picking it up and now I'm focused to get 116 uh, to a good uh, place. Uh, and then uh, I think this Bootstrap 4 has been for so long, <laughs> uh, going on for so long. Uh, that is, uh, as I was telling Dale yesterday, is no longer the Bootstrap 4 issue, it's the Bootstrap 5 issue now. <laughs> right. I think uh, Bootstrap 5 has been out for half a year at least. Gotcha. Nope, that answered my question. Like I said, I was I just missed the last uh, couple of weeks and it didn't know if uh, anything put out. So thanks for that. My pleasure. I don't think I'm revealing anything uh, huge when we say uh, that when I say that um, with Bogdan uh, and trying to to um, get a hold of the product side, there's also going to be a, a little bit different focus on trying to. Uh, increase our cadence of releases so um, they'll be smaller and uh, and faster 
um, in, in, in cycle rather than uh, long and um, in, inclusive. And uh, I don't know, did you have anything you wanted to say about that, Bogdan? Just we're, we're trying to, um, there, there are so many things, right? There's the fixing what everyone is using uh, already, uh, the minor things that we find along the way, and then big picture, where are we trying to go? So um, trying to trying to figure out what to say yes to, what to say no to is is a, uh, there, there are a lot of things on the list. And so we're trying to, to walk that intelligently. Yep, yep. So uh, yeah, the big picture is that uh, uh, the releases got bigger and bigger because our ambitions got, big, ambitions got bigger and bigger, but the development team didn't get bigger and bigger, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> so now uh, uh, the first thing that I, I did is get, in, get out of the way uh, everything that uh, would postpone the release. So there's the big things like uh, we want to launch a uh, uh, application templates feature. So basically you'd be able to start from various templates and in the future a big marketplace where people can post and import templates, publish templates and so on. So that, that is like, uh, these are like the big things where we want to take the product. But of course, in the meantime, there's all this uh, uh, legacy thing that we have to we have to take care of. We have to modernize, like the bootstrap for issue that has been haunting us for a while. But it's not uh, the only one. It's a lot of uh, legacy that we have to bring uh, to bring up to speed. And of course, there's also then the small features that makes everyone's lives better. So uh, yeah, like Dale says, uh, it's uh, difficult to juggle between all of this now with the resources that we have. But um, I think uh, we are on the right path to hire more people. Um, so in case you are not aware, I think the development team now uh, as a full, uh, full, full time uh, members of the development team is four people. You know, so it's not a big development team and they are doing heroic work, <laughs> keeping all of this uh, up to date. So uh, yeah. And I've been focusing mostly on the on the sales side for the past couple of months to ramp up the sales so we can afford getting more developers and move this faster. But then also there's a lot to gain in terms of processes and that's what uh, we want to do now, uh, separate the release, which is uh, we want to make it every two weeks and should have a goal from the, let's say the daily Kanban where there's a lot of things coming out from Dale uh, uh, via the support channel or from our other customers from internal resources and that is a lot of unplanned work and uh, will run a different process so then we can release those much faster than waiting a month for a release to happen. Great, good question. What else is going on? I have a few topics in my pocket here from uh, things that were suggested but if there's anything that's Important, happy to get to it first. And by the way, I came prepared uh, with the Lucene thing. Dale asked if I knew anything about that and I remember doing it, implementing it many years ago. So I'm prepared if, if that's still a question. It, it still is. I let me, uh, so we'll start scrolling down here. Uh, last, uh, we've been kind of talking about drag and drop here on both Cafe and Campfire. And I did it on, uh, uh, excuse me, I did it. Cherry Max gave a, a, a great uh, procedure, a simple procedure that I put into the form of something easily to, easy to consume. And there was at least one question about that. So I'm going to put uh, on our links here on our chat, uh, in case anybody has missed it, where I did that uh, in cafe and um, also the document about how to, um, how to do that. And, you know, just for anyone, I think everyone in this group has seen it, but uh, the drag and drop just allows you to do that. Right? So um, being able to put things in a particular order and it's very, uh, it's very slick, very fast, very straightforward. And I just wanted to make sure that everyone on both channels was aware of that. So, um, and then we go on to uh, exactly that question. Somebody asked to see, oh, this is not somebody, it's Mark. Mark asked to see examples of a Lucene query for the pre-filtering of an action grid. And uh, so, Bogdan, if you came prepared, I would be uh, grateful if you would 
teach me something today. Sure, sure. I can do it. So let's see. Sure. Cool. So I think uh, I think the 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 technique is pretty pretty easy to to master to learn, uh, especially once you understand the the uh, the the idea behind it. So uh, I just created something quick and dirty here. I have a form, uh, and then I have some names, and I'm going to do some filtering on these names initially. Like you see, in this grid, we don't uh, we don't see the entry I just added because. Uh, and I think I have it open around here, because basically uh, I wrote something like like this. Uh, so basically, do not show Mike and only show Joe. So basically, this one says to only show Joe, cancels this one. But I'll get to that in a minute to this uh, syntax. Right? So basically, if I now remove uh, the filtering condition, <clears throat> we now have. Uh, all the names back. Cool. <clears throat> so um, uh, maybe the first thing. Uh, let's uh, let me see if I have uh, I have a window open here. First of all, there is this uh, nice link here. Uh, it's um, it's the Lucene syntax. You know? So this is very useful. Also, if you are using search boost, uh, search boost is also based on Lucene and in the advanced search mode. It will be the same syntax as you'll see here. So I can definitely post this uh, on the chat window. Cool. So uh, uh, it's it's not uh, it's not something uh, something uh, I don't know very out of the ordinary. If you use the Google search in more advanced modes, probably you know a lot of these techniques already. You know, like searching for an exact expression by putting it uh, between codes, uh, applying a filter. You know. Uh, by 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 doing it like this, you know, so it will be the same in, in 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 Google, especially in Gmail, for example. In Gmail, you can do this kind of searches with filtering uh, based on various fields. And I, just before you go on, did you post that on the chat? Bogdan? Uh, I think maybe I send it privately to to someone. Let me put it for everyone. Thank you. I just I'm going to make sure that link makes it onto the recording as well. So yep. Thank you. Cool. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, basically, just uh, just looking at a few expression. Uh, this is the field. So in our case, it will be the name of the form field, and uh, uh, then it's uh, uh, the column, and then it's whatever you want to search for. No. So he, for example, in this last example, let's start from uh, bottom up. If you write it just like this, you see, it will it will uh, it will only apply to do, or something like that. No, it doesn't search for the exact expression. No. Uh, so if you wanted to search for uh, for the exact expression, write like this. If you wanted to uh, to uh, search for any of the words, you write title uh, column do title column it title column write. You know because then it would be like an or. So, anyways, different uh, different types of expressions you can use here: fuzzy search, wildcard search. So you can get very complex if you wanted to. Uh, what I did. So now going back just to show you some expressions how we apply it to what we have here. So uh, if I wanted to to only see, uh, let's say, uh, uh, we have maybe let me put what one more with uh, J. So let's put Jim as well. So let's see if I can get it to, to only show records are stuck with letter J. So I should be able to say a name. Uh, I think this is case sensitive. I'm not sure. We can check it. And then if we do something like this, the wildcard search might work. Let's let's check it out. Yeah, so you see, we only have entries that start with letter G. No? Because what we did, we uh, we applied uh, this, uh, where was it? This, uh, this uh, wildcard search, no? this expression. 
So is that pre-filtering? I notice you happen to be working with an action form data source. Is that available in uh, a variety of data sources or is it? I, it's only for the action form data source because uh, the action form data source uses a Lucene index in the, in the middle. So that's why okay. we are able to do that. If you are using a SQL data source that doesn't use a Lucene index in the middle, so you don't have this, but of course you have SQL, so you can write the advanced uh, search in SQL. So, okay. Good, so uh, some of the things uh, also here that, uh, uh, let's, let's build maybe a, 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 a more complex expression, uh, because one, one of the question is, how do you know all these, uh, all these uh, things that you have to put in front? Um, it's actually, you know, the idea of the form, but I will show you um, a better technique to see everything that's in the index. So basically, you see the idea of the form field gets translated into a Lucene field, and that's why I was able to search like that. But uh, <clears throat> what you'll see here, if you, if, you, if you read this text, there's a Lucene index, which is actually some binary files on the disk that you can find and you can open in a software to see what's inside. It's like a database if you want that's optimized for search. Mm -hmm. you know? So I actually went, uh, went and, and uh, went into this folder, you know, into the portal zero cache action grid, and there is a folder there. Uh, and I copied it locally. The folder is this one, the first one. It has some binary files inside it, but you'll not be able to open it as binary. Instead, there is a tool, uh, a very old tool, it's called Look. So if you search on Google, uh, look Lucene, something like that, and I will find it and put the link, you'll, you'll find this tool. I'm sure that maybe this is what I remember from, I don't know, many years ago, but there could be better tools nowadays. Uh, I will post this as one uh, as well on the chat. And then uh, what I downloaded from here was actually not the alpha, but uh, this three file. It's a Java application, so then you need to also have the, the Java virtual machine. Good. So once uh, once uh, you have that tool, let me close it and start uh, start uh, from scratch. Uh, this this is three five zero. So you open the tool, and then the tool uh, can open that folder. So I find that folder, and I open it. And now what happens, it tells me everything that's inside that index. Now, so first I can see the fields. Now, so this, besides the name field that we, we use, there are many other hidden fields like action form already has in, in its database, you know? So um, these are the name of the fields, but also I could start uh, navigating documents here. You know? So I have four documents. So document basically means an entry. You know? So I can see the first entry was this one. You see, I have so the edit URLs, uh, your URLs is not set, but then I can see the user ID was one. And I think in this first uh, test, I didn't have a name. So maybe I will have to go to the fourth one. Yeah, so this is record with ID three. You see the name and also publication date and other stuff. No. So this is, uh, this is how you can get inside the, uh, the uh, uh, index to see all the fields that you could use. No? Because, uh, and also you'll see some duplicates here, uh, for example, name and name. Uh, I'm not sure why uh, I, they are twice here. I think once they are for searching and one for filtering. I can't remember the reason exactly, but I'm sure we can find it somewhere in the documentation, buried somewhere. So would this tool uh, also apply to Search Boost if you needed to look at Search Boost indexes? Exactly, exactly. With the same tool, you can open the, the search boost index. And I think in a, in a search boost, let me see if I can find it here. I think there is an advanced search feature somewhere that basically allows you to use this syntax. Let's see. If I can find it. Uh, Or it could be implicitly that it's available. I'm not really sure. I think you can use it implicitly, like use this syntax. 
the directly the Lucene in syntax. Yep. Okay, that's useful. Okay. So what do you think? Uh, well, I think I learned a lot. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Bogdan. I, I hadn't seen that before, and that's a, I, can, I think I can run with that now. Thank you. My pleasure. All right, where do I go with my... There it is. Um, so good, that's a good one. One down. Um, so uh, this is another suggestion. I think this was you, Mark, right? The, the question is about um, understanding what your context looks like in various phases of a workflow. And the thought is that you can go to the trouble of logging um, things into a particular logging table in order to see how things progress. But is there any mechanism or would it be a good feature idea to have a mechanism to watch how your context changes step to step? Or an ability, may perhaps even an action to say, log my context. Is there anything along those lines? Who are you asking, Dale? Well, so first, did I get the question right? Oh. Second, if, if Bogdan happens to have a thought about it or uh, around, around the table, if anyone would see value in this. That is the question. And if it doesn't, I, I, first of all, I, it, it doesn't exist now, right? Being able to, to see the context. I, I went and turned on, for example, I turned on the trace logs for um, in Log4Net, turned everything, all the logs on, and I couldn't see any evidence that workflow context was being logged. Um, so, I, because, because that would be one easy answer if you're trying to chase it down and you turn on, on uh, Log4Net. I did come up with something, but it, it's just like you described. I, I created a new entity and I created a little procedure for storing points of data along the way in the workflow into the entity. I think it's a little bit messy. Um, so I'm looking for more suggestions. I'm happy to show it to you if you want to see it. I was hoping to learn. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I, I'm not sure if I understand that the question here is to see the everything that lives in the context or just to see uh, only data that has changed in which well, way? The, the, it is a, it's a debugging question, right? You're trying to figure out how to debug your workflow when the workflow is complex. Yeah, okay. I, don't, I don't need to see everything that each step along the way did, but I would choose, you know, I want to see what this token changed, what value it changed to, or if it didn't change, you know, mm -hmm. just chosen things along the way. Got it. Yeah, I don't think we have it now, but I think uh, it's good. It's a good idea. Would, um, uh... so similar to Mark's idea, my, my work around is I, I have a little workflow that writes that out, and I pass I pass tokens off to that workflow in the middle of the stream, so and I write them out to a table. It, yeah. it helps. It's the same result. It just sort of it's easy to put it add the action in the an extra action in the middle of a workflow and say what's the value of this token today, and then keep going. Um, is this the kind of thing that it would be? Um... If it if it were as part of the log for net logs, would that be uh, would that be useful? Something that you could turn on uh, when you're developing and turn off in production. Yeah, that would be helpful. I, I would want to be able to specify the pieces of information that I wanted to see, but I think you're saying that. Well, in the log for net logging, I'm not sure that that would um, it would just be. Uh, First of all, I don't know anything about how difficult it would be to implement such a change to just say every time a context changed, put the new value out into the into the log so then you could download it. 
but I, I wouldn't think you'd be able to specify. I was just saying perhaps it could be at, at, uh, in, that, um, in that area. Aside from that, it might be um, an action to, you know, it's, it's like a, a, a debug or a trace, say that you want to trace a, a, a particular context as it changes. Anyway, open to. This, this may um, be something you tried already or something, because I, you know, but just in case, um, there's also the log event action, which, um, you know, allow you to put something into the log and, and you don't have to make an exception. So it can, you know, you can, you have choices about what kind of uh, error is going to be. And uh, I would think that you could put that in at strategic points in the workflow and you could put it a condition on it and uh, and have an input that completes that condition so that um, you can put kind of in a roundabout way, put your workflow into debug mode. You know, mm -hmm. so you don't always have to log those events, but you have an input for the workflow that triggers those um, those loggings, so you can test it that way. And what was the name of that again? That action? Log event. It's uh, in the action list under uh, logs, I think, if I remember correctly. I've started using that on my end as well. I uh, just learned that and been playing with that. Usually I was either doing a message pop up to, a, you know, do stops or send myself an email what the data looked like, but those log events are uh, very helpful. That's a recent ad, isn't it? Like 114 or something? That's it is. Yeah, it's relatively new. Yep. So here's where you can decide what kind of alert it is. So it doesn't have to look like an exception in your log. And then you can add lots of properties yeah. that you want to display in that versus just one big long string uh, in the log error. Yeah. And then, yes, uh, to, to back uh, to the point of being able to conditionalize it, you could, you know, set, uh, set all your logging to say, you know, if it's in debug mode and then have at least one setting where you can flip it on or off, or even it could be a, a token at the um, at the tokens level of whether or not you're in debug mode. So, uh, but yeah, you do have to go out of, at, currently you got to go out of your way to, to, to log the intermediate in order to catch changes, catch what's going on in your flow. Right, and, and this brings up um, like a, a new thought I, for me at least, and that is that, uh, you know, if, if we add that log event into our workflow, then it's going to be put in um, a series of events. And so it then must complete in order to go on to your next step in the workflow. I wondered if there was a possibility of letting some things run as a separate task, but it's not necessarily um, must complete before the next thing runs. You know, like if you have an event, like it's an inject value, uh, inject token, then, you know, can it do its thing and then log, but the log doesn't have to complete successfully in order to go on to the next step after the inject action. Sort of like running things, a few things in parallel, not in series. Yeah. I, <laughs> I, I might, I, I, I've seen this because, you know, I've got this workflow put up together and I see that I'm, I'm branching off to go through my log and then I branch back up to get into my workflow again and branch down in my log, branch back up. And I think I, you know, I'd rather just go straight through my workflow and let those logs just happen as they occur without being part of the flow. Mm -hmm. So you're looking for more of an asynchronous situation? I think. I looked it up so I would be right, but I, I think it's synchronous. Yeah, happened at the same time, not uh, one after another. Yeah, I thought it was asynchronous, but I looked it up and I said, yeah, it's synchronous. Uh, uh, hey, Dale, let me show my screen for a second. Sure, and, and um, let's see, I'll get that started. Uh, would you be able to use a sharp scheduler for something like that? I don't know. Well, and I was I was going in another direction, which would be to uh, to use a token for something like that. 
so that I'm sorry, not necess- I'm sorry, you are correct from a from a whether it's synchronous or asynchronous. I think it's asynchronous point of view. Sharp scheduler might uh, come in handy there. And then in terms of of not branching out all over the place, um, using a, a database token to write those, um, you could do them in line with other things without actually having to yeah. have sessions or separate workflows. Right, Dale. Yeah, my suggestion exactly. Um, you know, if you look at this workflow, the top row is the actions that I actually want to do. The bottom row is all the times I reach down to to record in my log what the values were that changed. So notice the arrows go down, they come back up, they get back into the flow of thing. What I think could happen is if at the end, at the bottom of any one of these actions, if there was a little uh, spot down here where we could put a token, the token could take care of whatever we need to, including logging our stuff. Um, and that would just run because this action ran, I think, um, but it doesn't necessarily have to be in the flow. You know, it's just a, a conceptual thought that occurred to me as I was going through this and I don't expect answers right yeah. now. Oh, no. um, of course, we, we're not even starting in on what your, uh, what your workflow does, but back to the to talk about um, you know, correctly sizing those and, and uh, if it, um, if you can do something in a, in compartmentalize, that's a better, if it, if it can be smaller, then it's smaller to test. If this is all, if this is the only way to do it, then, then by all means, it's fine. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I could have a shorter workflow, but uh, yeah. This, it's actually not as long as it looks because it's got twice as many stuff because I'm logging all that stuff. Yep. yep. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, um, you know, you were, you were talking about being able to add an extra token to something. Um, lots of times you can, in any place where, where it's um, being evaluated, oh, go ahead and open up the one that you were, I mean, go open up one at random or the one that uh, doing if you had created and sc- scroll on down. Uh, for, okay, okay, so there's a token expression on that one, for example. Um, and uh, if you created a database token that doesn't return anything but does the logging that you want to do, any place where it accepts a token, you could drop it in. So even though it, it, it would, um, you, could, you could drop it in there in token expression at the end to, to do logging. And it wouldn't do any, you know, it would execute it without doing anything, without bothering your, your flow. And with the workflow as a, a token now, you could draw, that could be a workflow, that, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's, that's the way I've got my blogging set up. It's a workflow running as well. In other places, I run it as a token, yeah. Mark, using Dale's idea, every single action has a condition. So if you created a token that did logging, took in some parameters to log it wherever you wanted and always returned true as its value, you put that in the condition Mm. and it wouldn't even actually affect any other conditional statements you have in there because it's whatever and whatever and whatever. So as long as you tack it on correctly, um, even if you have a false in there, if you have a false and true, it's still going to be false. So you can still do whatever conditional you want, but that token will always do the logging and every single action has a condition. That's a great idea. Do you think there's any chance that if I wrote a bad um, procedure that, that my token was running, if it failed, would that stall the workflow? Or could I always have a default return even if it failed? A default is true. That would I wouldn't want I would to say get in the on way. How you program the token? If you program it so that it can uh, tolerate, uh, you know, errors of of a certain nature and have a graceful exit and return your default either false or true, then you should be fine. And and if it is in fact a workflow, you can set the output to be true. Period. So when it comes back, it will be true. If it works. If it doesn't fail, it'll return a true. 
Uh, I see what you're saying. Yep. Yeah. So, yep, you're, I, th I think you are introducing a little bit of uncertainty, but at least that one token would be testable. I mean, it really would depend on what you're doing. If all you're doing is writing something to a database or writing some, uh, you know, somewhat simple, you can, it's kind of under your control. If you add a, if you had a complex process that might blow up, or if you're emailing somebody, it would completely slow down your your, uh, your execution. Okay. Yeah, well, I, I like Ben's idea. I like it a lot. Uh, it, you know, that takes this workflow that you see now and it cuts it in half. Um, and I like that. And it doesn't. It, it it might introduce a little bit of uncertainty if I if I write a bad workflow that does that token. Um, but on the other hand, it it's a lot cleaner and more straightforward. So. Yeah, you know, but my, my comment that I would add on top of that would be, it would be cool if I could run the token and it and the workflow didn't depend on it to, to work at all. You know, if it if it attempted and it works great, but if it fails, you know, life, it, the flow continues to go. So like like an appendix or an appendium, you know, something extra. So that's just, you know, a thought that has occurred. I, I'm not asking for stuff right now, but I like the solutions we've talked about. Absolutely. I think I'm going to have to work up a, a demo of that one because that, that's a nice uh, collaboration idea. Um, and, you know, a generic logging one, writing something. Um, yep, I have to think about that one, but it's pretty, pretty neat. Thank you, guys. Mm -hmm. Um, great. Um, and I think now we're into blank topics. What else we got going on? So, hey guys, I'm not the only one that knows how to fill out that form to uh, suggest topics for our campfire. Well, we're glad that you do. Um, it's, 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 uh, I, I have a good. question for you, Dale. Or, okay. Or the, you know, the group here. So I, 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 I submitted my form when we had the search boost conversation. Of course, that was the week I could not attend. <laughs> um, the part of my question was about the concept of search boost. You know, I have a, a database on one site that I want to run searches um, from another site, and I didn't, know, I didn't really get from the discussion or from the documentation, if you can get how you would access a search boost index, would you would you index it from both sites? Um, would you, you know, build a, a form on site B that you know, that is you know, so it has its own index? Um, yep. So uh, so that's a really good question. Give me a second to. Uh, Compose an answer. Thanks for that. Cool. What else? So uh, I'll just say this is this is not my actual background, but uh, not not very far behind me. There is a beach that looks just like that. I took that picture just as soon as I got here. Uh, still, um, um, uh, spent the whole week down with my wife at the beach. We have some friends that had a, have a beach house or just a few rows off the, off the beach. So um, I've been enjoying my Labor Day. That's, we'll, we'll be back to my office scene next week. Uh, actually, uh, Dale, I have a qu question. Um, is there any more uh, uh, progress gonna go on with the, uh, the academy, um, part of the the courses or anything like that. Um, well, I'm sure that um, let's see. Radu has started making from time to time discussion about uh, what's happening in academy during uh, Loco Cafe. He hasn't done that in two weeks, so I will ask him to uh, jump in. But Radu is in charge of that. Uh, <coughs> Maybe aware of. I can give a, a, a quick update. Oh. 
Um, Great, thank you. Beth. Yeah. So uh, we're currently um, working on a new course that will be a um, much more basic course, like kind of like a a brief intro uh, to, and it won't it won't include any coding at all. So like in the current course we have, we're including some uh, um, you know there's JavaScript and SQL and stuff like that in there, and uh, in this upcoming course it'll be shorter and we won't include any coding because uh, um, we determined that there's a need for that. So we're going to do that, and then and then. Uh, um, later on, we will um, start approaching the idea of a more advanced course. Okay. Yeah. So that's okay. uh, that's where we are right and, now with that. And since you're asking, is there anything? I mean, if you if you had a wish list, what would be on it? Yes, actually, well, that's great. Uh, well, yeah, you know, I don't have a wish list, but I mean, there was a couple of things. I guess I I had completed the academy or the course, the one course that was there, and, and I I was trying to submit some updates or just some things that were I saw that could be corrected, but I noticed that the help form doesn't work. I get an error every time I, I try to submit it. And I, I, I did get your email and it's been fixed. Oh, <laughs> so the help, okay. form, the help form does, does work now, yep. <laughs> okay, great, that's good to know. <laughs> um, and you know, the other part of your email was about the, um, uh, the, the progress. And um, so the, the progress, uh, up, it, it, the only up, the only way the progress updates is by spending time on a uh, on a specific uh, section of the course, and then uh, and then if you spend a certain amount of time, that'll be automatically checked off. But if you want to check off any section, all you have to do is just check the the right hand side of the page, and that will that will complete that uh, section is uh, that'll make that section complete for you. Um, it's supposed to when you check that box, it's supposed to automatically update the progress bar at the top. But that's something that uh, we're working on correcting right now. It's uh, it did work at one point, but it's not working right now. But if you check the box, it does update your progress in the database. And if you refresh the page, you'll see the the uh, the progress has been updated. Okay. Does that make Great. sense? Yeah, it does make sense. Yeah, I, I okay. I'll go back and check and see, make sure I have all of them checked. But I I thought I did, but I'll I'll check it again. But thanks okay. for the update, Patrick. Yep. Yeah, sure. What else? Um, so Mark's popped on a question that everyone can see about uh, RSS feeds. Uh, and uh, so just to display an RSS feed, is that is that uh, JSON by any chance or? Uh, you know, I haven't seen the RSS feed yet. I asked for it, but I haven't received it yet. But uh, I was told they have they have a series of videos that their uh, supply hosting company that's hosting the videos can convert those into MP3s and make an RSS feed to uh, to deliver those for a podcast type uh, arrangement. So my job is to put that on the website uh, with a player for each one, so they can play their their MP3s one at a time. Yep. So uh, if it's if it's JSON, I think that uh, doesn't it's, uh, I, grid allow you to load JSON. Yeah, I think by default RSS is XML. It's an yeah. old thing. Uh, that's what it would be. Yeah, and um, we have in the past converted XML into JSON, which could then used as a source, right? Um, we don't, is it correct? We don't accept XML as a source. Uh, did and I Mark, just, oh, I'm sorry, Dale, this is Craig uh, and Mark, if, uh, Actually, Bogdan's team helped me with a token that parses out XML for me and puts it into tokens. I'm happy to share it with you to uh, see if that helps you, if it is XML. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I expect it to be XML. I think that's normal for an RSS feed, like, like Bogdan said. So yeah, I'd be uh, interested in seeing that. Was that okay. Craig? It is, yep. I think I have your information, I'll email you. Okay, thank you. Yep, I uh, actually, um, I'm in the mortgage business, so we uh, get an XML for credit reports. I've been parsing all of that, so it works pretty good. Thank you. So, uh, you know, another thought, I mean, I, I, I thought we had the ability to, to 
handle JSON into a uh, as a data source. So once you got it converted into, uh, if you converted it into JSON and it's a file on your system, you could then point um, the data source to that as a possibility. As you know, there's any number of ways. Once you once you have it as a data source, you could just consume it directly into a data as well. But um, you, you might be able to do it as a as a periodic read. Yeah. Into Wow. I think I could handle it from there. Okay. Um, yep. If you, I, I have some of that um, available too. So if, and it's, I may have been the source of some of what Craig. Dale, you were the source. Yeah. I remember. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, if you're good, if, if you, if you want to email him, that would be terrific. Thanks again. Cool. All right, I think we're, uh, let's see. Uh, if there's anyone that ever wants to present a solution or a use case and just kind of go through and say, here's, here's what I've done, um, whether you call it a brag session or, uh, but I mean, it's, we've, we've gotten into several discussions to the, you know, this week, last week, it's, uh, you know, when, when you see some, how somebody else does things, it kind of sparks, um, Oh yeah, I can do that. Um, I guess I will. Uh, so, so anyway, if anyone want to suggest something, by all means. Um, any feedback on uh, where we've gone so far with Adalo in the mobile platform in Locode Cafe? I'm going to do another session on it. Uh, one more, at least one more this week. I'm going to do a shopping cart, but just general feedback would be great. I haven't played with it yet. This is Craig, uh, but it looks for my industry. Uh, it's funny, we we're working on kind of a point of sale, uh, but it was nothing as uh, great as a dollo. But now that I can see that we can integrate the two, you know, maybe look for a single sign on with the current. Uh, but, you know, the inner what you've shown so far, the uh, integration between the two is definitely for me going to help out a lot. So definitely appreciate that. Because I've been looking for, I just wanted a shell where I could log in, but then everything is done through plan for Uh Yeah, it's a nice, I, I like the idea of, you know, plant app doing the heavy lifting. Adalo does a lot. I wouldn't, you know, I, it, it, I wouldn't throw, throw any shade on what they're doing, but uh, to be able to use it in a larger sense uh, and the best of both of those worlds, I think is uh, a terrific one. Yep, agreed. Yeah, I've done um, the whole single sign-on is, uh, uh, I don't have it as a single sign-on, but, but um, if we get into something that requires authentication, we are using, I, I have succeeded at doing uh, the JWT authentication with the uh, site. So you're able to sign on to um, your mobile application and get a token using your username and password. I mean, behind the scenes, it all, it all works so that you are able to access according to your rights on um, with that username on, on plant and app. So, we can we can definitely extend it whether or not it that, that what steps we might have to do to actually make it be single sign on there might be a couple of steps in the middle but yeah and that's what i figured haven't played with it yet so i was definitely looking at a token but didn't know exactly which token uh, so uh that was just one thought that i was looking for so when somebody's looking at their mortgage application they can click on it and i don't know if they can just you know use their face and it just logs them in kind of thing like uh the ones i'm using now uh, my the apps uh today so i haven't gotten that far yet but that's kind of what i was looking at yep well at, at the very you know at the very least if um i think it would be very easy if they start with the dollo and um create their account there. If you're, if you're creating a mobile account and, and yet you, you at the same time could create a, uh, um, a plant and app account with the same password, with that. Yep. keeping yep. everything, keeping everything uh, synchronized. Um, that's a little, that probably is an area that's a little tricky. Um, gotcha. 
and then you know when a password change happens, making sure it happens across the board. So a little little right. couple of things that need to happen there. But I'm glad it's provided. You know, it sounds like it's providing some value. I'm I'm real interested in it. Uh, so just just out of curiosity, you would, uh, the the sign on thing, the JWT, you'd be interested in seeing that. Uh, me personally, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I, it's it's where I want to go. I'm not sure whether I'm going to get there this week, but there is a, a, a low code feature focus that talks exactly how to do the JWT, and it's easy to apply to a dollar. But I've right, I, I've got it in in a slide that we can. I'll make sure at least to at least put up the slide and explain it. But I think um, we, we really should come up with a use case where that. And that could be a training session, you know, at Dalo from beginning to end. Uh, yeah. More stuff on Patrick's plate. <laughs> well, you know, it's it's Thanks. not it's not an official. Yeah, I have no problem in putting things on on Patrick's plate. It's <laughs> a uh, you know an official um, Clinton app partnership, but uh, it certainly makes it certainly makes good sense to have a low code, low code approach to getting these things done. Uh, no, could, agree. I, I think you know, with what, with what I've learned so far, it seems that, uh, you know, I could probably make Facebook now, uh, with plant an app in a dollar. It's just, nobody's going to do that. Right. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. You can come out with, uh, yeah, you know, uh, your Dale app and everybody yeah. goes to that. So it's very powerful and just showing what you've done because, you know, mobile apps today and even the, uh, the progressive web apps, if somebody doesn't want to down, you know, they can just do that as well. Uh, but in the mortgage space, you know, apps are becoming mobile apps are becoming huge to where, you know, you can get updates, you can submit documents, you can take pictures of documents. It goes back into, uh, plant an app into the file manager and you know there's so many cool things that you can do all via low code and that really I, I really that's a great one another idea to explore is pictures of documents being able to access the camera and get it up to plant an app so uh, I'm going to take that as an idea for a session uh, if see if it's not not too hard to put in but um, yeah, yeah. A QR scanner would be nice uh, and apparently there is one um, built into that. So oh, nice, very good. Cool. Yeah, I haven't been able to make it work yet. <laughs> to their price point, um, you know, to be able to build apps for for fifty dollars a month uh, sure sounds like a very reasonable. It's insanely cheap. Yeah, yeah, that's very cheap. And, and Craig, it turns out the Adalo is creating a progressive web app. Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, that's all three, uh, which is just wonderful. Uh, I mean, I was looking to do that as a next step, and I was researching, and it was so funny. Then Dale came out with his, hey, we're going to look at it. I'm like, oh, my gosh. I think somebody posted it on, somebody was using it today and just referenced, yeah, this is what I'm using. Uh, and then it just became forefront, and I looked at that, and it was like, this is exactly what I was needing. Uh, that, that was you, Albert, right? Take credit. Uh, I, it's possible. I'll take credit for it, though. All right, Albert, <laughs> it is. Was, Thanks, Albert. It was Albert. <laughs> yeah, he was the first one. So um, I see Ben has added a question about if else action, um, and uh, I saw that um, one of our one of our uh, users had created an if else action. We could probably I could probably convince him to publish that, but. It's not, it wouldn't be, uh, that particular one isn't an official uh, add-on to the Plantonet product. It would just be an easy add-on if you wanted to, uh, because the, the product is so extensible, that's what he, that's what he built. Um, did, I don't know, did you, did you remember that, um, Bogdan, and are we, uh, is that something we'd be interested in seeing as an action type in part of the core product? Uh, yes, but uh, you see, with the new pattern of moving more and more to the workflows, that branching feature is basically replacing the if else. Not so good for now because we don't have a else close yet. You know? But uh, we can do the inverse of the condition, and that acts as a as a else. Yep. But basically, basically, the pattern that we follow now, if it's getting too complex, you don't want to put it in a module because it will become difficult to maintain. 
you know? So then the, the moment that you need to do some conditional logic in a form and you are not doing it in a workflow, it will probably, it's a good sign that you have to move that logic to a workflow, I think. Yeah, I think that implementation was a was an execute actions that was uh, modified to have a if side and an else side. That was the was the only thing. So, uh, but then that allowed allowed nesting. I don't again not sure whether it's uh, the best thing for the product, but it is. It was an easy add that he did. So, um, Ben, would you be interested in in me uh, finding that for you as a private? I think we all would. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. Well, I'll ask. Uh, that, that's uh, David Osborne. Um, he's been on here several times, so I'll ask him if that's available and what it would look like. Okay. Great. Uh, what do you think? Take four minutes and... Uh, oh, yep, it was. Good job. Um, then I think we will uh, wrap up and just say that we will get together again next Friday. I'll be back at home base, 10 a.m. Central, and um, look forward to seeing you then. And uh, thank you all for being here. Thanks, Alan. Thanks, Thanks Dale. Dale. Thanks, Thanks Bogdan. Good Thanks, seeing Dale. you. Thanks, Thanks Bogdan. Thanks, everybody. Good session. Thank you. Thank you as well. I love you. Thank you, everyone.